everybody. <laughs> My name is Veronica. My name is Juan. And uh, we are yes. co-founders of Moveco. And we are really glad to be here today to talk a little bit on whether it's the right time to be an entrepreneur or not. Uh, it's our first time presenting in Zoom. So if you have any questions, I guess you can write on the chat. We will try to answer or you can also later write us an email. We will give you our contact details. And yeah, if you like, uh, we can go ahead. Ah, we are in Spain, in case you <laughs> don't know. <laughs> so today talk, we decided to split it into three main areas. First, uh, we wanted to tell you about our story, our Moveco journey and let everybody know why we decided to be an entrepreneur and how fun this has been so far. Second area, we wanted to discuss with all of you what is our point of view on whether it's now a right time to become an entrepreneur and discuss a little bit there about how is this scenario for Europe and what are some areas that might be more interesting to look into in the next uh, coming future. And finally, we decided to just gather some lessons we learned so far in case can be useful for, for any of you thinking about becoming an entrepreneur soon. Let's go ahead. So first we wanted to just introduce a little bit what we, we founded, what's our startup about. Our startup is called Moveco. The idea is that it's getting together two words, move and ecologically, so move eco. And what we are doing is the first electric and hybrid cars marketplace in Spain. And hopefully in Europe yeah. and in the world. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, first let's introduce ourselves. Um, as I said, my name is Veronica, I'm co-founder and CEO. Before starting this venture and journey, I was and still I am an aerospace engineer. I work for Airbus in Hamburg in Germany. And after that, I moved to United States to study an MBA at Emory University in Atlanta. Uh, and I was graduated from my MBA last year in June. And now we are working together with my co-founder. <laughs> my name is Juan. Uh, as you may know by the short names, we are siblings. <laughs> I'm also <laughs> co-founder and the CEO. Uh, I'm an architect, a marine en engineer, uh, and I've been uh, working just before found, uh, uh, the foundation of Moveco in the naval maritime industry. Uh, first as a, uh, in the technical department of uh, one shipping company and then I moved to the commercial side of the uh, other one. Yeah, that's true. And as you already know, we are a family and also co-founders <laughs> and this is pretty interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also because we come from an entrepreneur's uh, family. Our father founded a shipping uh, company. company yeah. yeah, and we have been always very inspired to do the things differently, to think about uh, taking your ride, to try to bring something to society, to create some impact. And that's why we wanted to let you know a little bit more of our background. Um, how we started Moveco, right? This is the question right now. So this comes about people and also about our interests. <laughs> First of all, as you may see, uh, may see there over there, uh, I've been fascinated about cars like uh, since I was like very very young, two or three years old. I think I, I was over there, uh, and I was always with my wheel, uh, thinking that I was driving everywhere, even into the sea, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, where I. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's uh, my hobby for since, since I was very, very young. Yeah, I can confirm that he <laughs> he loves uh, automotive and cars, and he was always with his wheel. I remember he lost his <laughs> wheel in the sand, probably that day on the beach, and it was pretty funny because not only I and also our family were looking for the wheel, but the whole neighborhood for three <laughs> days we were looking for the wheel. Yeah. In fact, we, we didn't find the, we didn't find the, the wheel, but we found uh, some uh, car keys. So at the end it was a good change. <laughs> I changed the <laughs> the fake car for a real one. So I had my first car with two or three years old. <laughs> That's some fun part of the story. 
From my side, um, I'm very passionate about sustainability, everything, and my interest started when I moved to Germany and I live in Hamburg. There I, I bought my bike and I was driving with my biking to, to every place. And so much I love it that when I moved to United States, I bought my electric car. That's the picture that you can right. see. And yeah, and um, it was very kind of fun because in United States, nobody's biking, nobody's walking. So I was the only one uh, biking everywhere, as you can see in the picture. With, and I was so happy with my electric car. And so at that time we were living our lives and Juan had his automotive interest. I was very happy into sustainability. And suddenly there was something that happened that started everything. And it is that uh, Juan was living in Spain at that time. Yeah. And we, yeah, we I were, we were um, my father and I, we were looking for a, a new car. We were trying to find an electric car. Uh, because we wanted to change the the, the one that we have uh, the one that we had at that time, so we start to look into the market to see the different brands, the different specifications about the different cars and so on. Even I, I'm very passionate about the the automotive uh, industry and so on. He knows a lot. He knows all <laughs> the specifications about every car. No, just uh, <laughs> I'm just a freak about that one, but, uh, about that thing, but. Uh, even myself, I didn't found uh, any place uh, where I feel like comfortable, uh, where I found uh, a, a nice specification and, 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 and reliable information. So but we I found so we found uh, we found uh, a problem for those who want to to change their car and and, and we're looking for uh, electric or, or hybrid uh, vehicle. Yeah. So I want to add to what Juan said that um, there was an additional problem, I believe, is the regulations, right? I think not only in Spain, but in the different uh, European and worldwide countries, each one have different regulations about what are the benefits of having an electric car, where you can drive in, where not, where you can find the charging points, so many things that are important to make your decision on whether to buy an electric car and which one to buy. So yeah, we found that problem and we thought, okay, probably many people have this same yeah. problem, right? So um, we first did an analysis of the market and we looked into Spain first and we saw that this is a, a small niche still today, um, the electric and hybrid cars, but it is a market growing pretty rapidly. Uh, it is expected to be almost 10 times bigger in just five years, right? So at this time we thought, okay, there is here a big problem and a bigger that a problem that can have some scalability, right? And at this time I was still studying my MBA in the United States and I decided in my classroom entrepreneurship to ask the professor if I could develop a business idea I had with my brother from a problem that we found in the market. My professor said yes, and this is where our adventure started. And now we want to tell you a little bit of what has happened since that moment till today. Um, yeah, so at this time when I was at Emory University, we prepared this uh, presentation uh, for the class and it was very interesting because we were selected as uh, one of the best three startups that presented in, in that course. So we invited us to present in front of some investors in the United States and Juan flew from Spain to Atlanta, and we we presented in front of uh, I think mm. more than twenty or something I like think, that. I think even more than thirty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was very. The class yeah. was uh, huge. Yeah, mm. the class was huge, and it was very interesting because we saw there was some interest in the market. After that, we were selected also to present to some venture capital, and we also won an award that uh, it was like a six months uh, period of time place in an a startup incubator in Atlanta called Atlanta Tech Village. So this was very inspiring for us. It just started as uh, something that was fun, but it was getting more into reality. Oh, really good. Sorry, did somebody ask? Vicky? Okay. Maybe um, so yeah, so what happened is that um, I was at that time also uh, looking for a job and I decided to stop my research and 
moved to Spain to try to check if uh, we could develop something and can make it real in Spain. So I moved to Spain and Juan and I, we started to visit uh, car dealers. We visited like 30 car dealers to check on whether they might be interested to have a partner that was specialized in electric and hybrid cars in order to help them sell and commercialize their electric and, and hybrid cars. Mm -hmm. uh, I think all except one, they really like sure. our idea. Mm -hmm. and this helped us to push forward. So mm -hmm. what we did is we wanted to get close to the startups ecosystem in Spain uh, because we really think it's important to be surrounded by people who have done this adventure before and get the best advice and support and be able to uh, raise your dabs to, to a community, right? And this was the amazing moment when we <laughs> learned about Techon Valley <laughs> and um, this Google for the Startups campus in Madrid. We applied to their school and we were super happy to be selected as one of the 11 teams. Yeah. I think we were a startup, sorry. And this was a really amazing start. It was a really amazing time over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned a lot with the Techon Valley guys. And a really good experience, I believe. Yes, uh, I we say this because um, what we want to tell you is that when you decide to become an entrepreneur, we really encourage you to look around you and get part of those communities that probably exist mm -hmm. in different cities. And this is very inspiring and it, you will find um, for free a lot of support which cannot be better right and also you you can also gain a lot of visibility and also this helps you to close more contracts and more things that are coming up later so yeah please do that and look for the community that you think um, it can link better with your principles and try and yeah fight, fight yeah. for it and this helped us to become residents in Google for Startups in the campus where the Tom Valley is. And this has been also amazing because we can work all together there in our office. And well, before the coronavirus, we could work there. Now <laughs> we work online. But it's pretty nice also to, to be together and to close more deals. And after this journey and keep working, we finally had recently launched our first MVP. We wanted to show you a little bit more of what uh, is what we're trying to do. Uh, there are many uh, cars, um, car marketplaces, but none is specifically focused in electric and hybrid cars. So this is the first uh, difference that what we are doing. Secondly, we want to make it easier, as we were saying, right? For all those uh, potential buyers that are thinking about buying an electric and hybrid car. So to do that, Easier, the first thing we are trying to solve is the biggest gap we found, which was mm -hmm. the lack of information. So in our product uh, pages, uh, where the cars are, uh, all the customers can find an area with specifications about their electric cars. We call it electrical specifications, so, such as the range, which is very important for the decision making of buying an electric car or not, the type of battery, the warranty of the battery, the um, so the kind of the, the type of the chargers. Yeah, the time that it takes to charge your car, the connectors. I was looking for the electrical power word in English. Sorry, oh. el la potencia. And this, uh, we think, we make it as clear as possible, and this is really helping the users to find and compare from one car to another, right? Uh, with this information, uh, we also give the users an average uh, cost uh, for them to, to charge their cars and they can compare this uh, cost with the cost of using regular fuel, such as gasoline. And this is very interesting because on average, uh, by using an electric or hybrid car, you can save more than 50% of the driving costs. And we try to make it clear. Second thing we are doing in our MVP is that we help uh, also our customers to buy a charging point. This is the second biggest barrier. Uh, people don't know where to find a company to install a charging point yeah. at their home, what is the cost, whether they can do it or not, and so on. So what we do is we also um, give them some information and we uh, send them some offers and we have deals and contracts with manufacturers and installator, install, installation guys to make this transit much easier. 
And the third problem that we found and we tried to solve is the purchasing cost, right? You probably, if you're into this topic or you know people who have talked about buying an electric car, you probably heard that many people say, okay, it sounds very good, but electric cars are much more expensive. So I don't see, uh, or I cannot buy them yet, right? So in order to try to mitigate this, uh, as we are not manufacturers, um, we think that the starting with a used uh, car is a great idea to start this technology, start trying this technology and be able to, to buy it. So that's why also our MVP is based on used cars. And yeah, this is what we are working for. We are trying to aggregate the full offer of used electric and hybrid cars in Spain and give clear information about the electric specifications and make it easier for them to buy and install their charging points. So to make it easier and cheaper to start using electric uh, mobility. Um, this is very, very nice because even if it takes time to build all of this, uh, we have around 400 cars already and we have already uh, some clients. So yeah, this is uh, what happened so far. Also, mm -hmm. uh, to make this happen, we wanted to tell you that this experience has uh, allowed us to meet different companies, um, get listened by, by important people in, in those organizations, by leadership, and uh, we were able to close uh, interesting contracts mm -hmm. with them, such as Mercedes-Benz Retail Group in Spain, also some uh, leasing, leasing big companies, companies uh, like a ALD, Alphabet, you probably may know those ones. And very interesting also with the uh, best uh, charging point companies mm -hmm. such as Wallbox. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a special offer, only if you buy your car with Moveco, 20% discount in your <laughs> charging point. So <laughs> don't hesitate to let us know if you need something. <laughs> And yeah, all this journey has been interesting. Yeah, oh, also, also we, mm -hmm. uh, just before uh, we launched our MVP, uh, during all this um, trip, let's say, <laughs> uh, we were um, checking the market and also if we were able to sell uh, cars. Uh, so we launched uh, a landing page, uh, very simple, just explaining our unique selling point and and bringing some offers uh, to the to the people. So we put there our telephone number, our email address, and uh, we start to receive some um, interest, some calls that people that uh, uh, was uh, in the same um, status that way we were before. So they were now to see uh, where to buy their next electric car, or they don't know if they uh, move to a hybrid or a full electric car. So. Uh, we uh, did our first five sales with uh, just uh, a landing page. So I think uh, this is very important just before you totally. invest in a, in a good uh, or even better uh, MVP. So you prove the market, you prove that the, your idea is in, in a good way and also that the, the most important that you can manage some sales. Mm -hmm. Totally agree, uh, Juan. These, uh, uh, these pictures are from... Uh, to our first customers. sales. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I totally agree with Juan, and it's a great point that you mentioned this and highlighted. Um, for all of you guys that are thinking about uh, becoming an entrepreneur, I think it's very important that before uh, you start to build everything, you create a simple version, a free landing page uh, you can do on weekends or something and start testing and uh, whether this is your product your idea is interesting in in the market and this really help us also yeah. to really to feel a little bit more comfortable because there is a lot of uncertainty when you start something so it's highly recommended mm -hmm. yeah and it's very exciting when you make the first picture to the first <laughs> customer <laughs> It's very, very nice. And yeah, and the last thing also highlight that we have achieved so far is that we were in an um, electric car specialized magazine in Spain. And this was also a very important moment for us and very exciting because we uh, believe us, uh, we see this and we don't understand <laughs> how did it happen <laughs> that we arrived there. 
Um, it was very nice and it means a lot to us. Uh, we get in contact with uh, this uh, magazine that is uh, also a very niche uh, magazine. They had started like uh, one year, one year and a half mm -hmm. ago. And we met them, I don't know where, I think like in one fair or something. Yeah. And uh, we talked to them because we wanted to also move mobility to electric mobility or push forward um, like more easily. And it was a shared mission with them. So they really like our story and they let us um, be in their, in an article they made us an inter in interview yeah and it was very exciting and this also it it helps to sell more so our recommendation here also in, uh, is that um, get in contact with uh, industry magazines people or somebody who would be willing willingness to who will be willing willingness to support you for free this is very important, especially at the beginning, because it's another way to validate your idea and to get more uh, um, more visibility and get more recognition when at the beginning we don't have any history so far. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as a summary of uh, all of this, we wanted to gather all together on why we decided to be an entrepreneur. I think we, we were very clear talking about how passion is very important because um, you will, or we keep finding a lot of difficult uh, moments. And there is mm -hmm. a high uncertainty. So feeling a lot of passion on what you do is really important to keep pushing forward and to feel energized and to really keep keep doing it mm -hmm. and, and be happy and, and keep fighting for it. You need a lot of passion to be prepared to push every time because there are a lot of up and downs and uh, when it's uh, up it's easy to be happy and so on but then uh, suddenly something happens and then maybe you have uh, like a bad week or whatever but you have to go up again uh, as soon as possible so you have to be very passionate about what you are doing and uh, in the industry that you are doing that so yeah so keep an eye on things that you feel passionate about and uh, second thing, uh, probably also very important uh, or more important is to have a purpose. So to solve a problem, what is the problem you want to solve? Uh, it's something that has to be really important for you. This is something that happened for us because uh, helping the society, Spain or the world to start using and driving electric cars sooner is something that uh, we really think is important, important purpose to, to keep. To, to work on, right? Yeah. So look for a really problem that you think you can create an impact in the world and try to, to look for this problem in something that fascinates you. Uh, the third thing is people. Uh, we think that uh, one of the main reasons we decided also to start this venture is uh, the, the idea of being able to work with the people you choose. This is something very interesting uh, because when you work in a corporate or you start a job in a company, uh, hopefully your yeah. team is nice. <laughs> <laughs> but you just but you just join <laughs> wherever it is, you know. So. Yeah, and you, you don't have the choice to choose the people you work with, and this is a great benefit and something that we love from trying to be an entrepreneur is to work in the team that we we like. Uh, we think. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. For the, <laughs> you thank really. you, Juan. Uh, we prepared this picture when we were about to talk about uh, for about people, uh, because also we wanted to mention another point that during the journey you will keep meeting a lot of people because you pitch your idea, you keep meeting people who can be your mentors and support you and so on, and during the day, the, during the long journey. Uh, you will meet people that they can become your team members. This is what happened with us with our CTO. So we really recommend you to keep your eyes on also in looking for people you will like to work with in your journey and that can bring value to the team and that you can feel that you have a good relationship yeah. with. And another reason why we get to be an entrepreneur is that we love keep learning. And when you build a startup or you're working in a new uh, project that you have in mind, you keep learning super fast. So it's a very fast uh, pace of learning, uh, much faster than what you can find in most of corporates. So this is something that was 
very calling mm -hmm. our attention and this is a great thing uh, to consider about being an entrepreneur and added value for sure. And finally, uh, happiness. Um, there is a lot of happiness time when you fight together and suffer together and then you achieve little things. Uh, it's a, a happiness and a special like feeling that I don't think or did, you can find in corporate or it would be much difficult because here everybody's putting their time, putting their money, doing sacrifices for the same purpose at the same level. So that happiness energy is amazing. I pretty much, we pretty much recommend it. Uh, even if you decide to become an entrepreneur with your family. <laughs> there is a lot of moments of happiness. <laughs> and yeah, final reason we decided to be an entrepreneur was to try, why not, let's say the truth, to make some money. <laughs> uh, this uh, is uh, the main purpose too, to be able to generate employment and to have uh, nice salaries and do something special. Uh, we are far away from that moment, <laughs> but this is a motivation uh, to keep uh, doing this. I think uh, the good thing is that uh, when you became to, you decide to be an entrepreneur and, and create your startup, you hold a lot of risk. Uh, you will not earn a good salary for a long time, but hopefully this will make it up later with a high value of your business, an exit, or a lot of money that. Uh, comes later and, and it's at the end worth it on that. Yeah, and we wanted to highlight also why we think it's very different and uh, what we decided uh, in terms of working in our startup compared to working in a corporate yeah. job. At the end is like really the, the almost the opposite opposite, uh, opposite thing that uh, you are doing in a, in a corporate job, right? Because uh, at the end, you just join a team, as I said before. Uh, maybe you join a, a nice, uh, a nice job, a nice, um, yeah, a nice uh, event team, yeah. Uh, but uh, you have to to work with people that you don't know before. So at the same time, uh, it could be some people that are more like you, more funny, more positive, more open, or something like that. But uh, it could be also be older guys that uh, they are maybe working there for the last uh, 25 years and they are burned out. Um, they don't uh, care. Yeah, no, they don't care. They're they, they just motivated, maybe. They, they just do the, the minimum just to not be fired out. Fired. <laughs> <laughs> right? The minimum so, is yeah. to not be fired. And also maybe you, you can have also a boss that they, you don't like, it's very tough. Uh, yeah, like mm. all these things that they, it can happen with your work workmates or even mm. with your boss. And Juan, one question. What about the dress? Because yeah, of course. <laughs> that's another positive point for mm. uh, people who who became an entrepreneur. At the <laughs> end, uh, you work like almost, I don't know, 18 hours a day. So you can be with your t-shirt. You can and, be yourself. Models yeah. and dress code. <laughs> no need to, to wear the, the suit. Not dress code, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we wanted to say, yeah, that this is very different in case you're thinking about corporate uh, jobs after you finish your studies to also like balance this and think about those sides uh, to make your decision. Uh, corporate has positive things that you have more financial stability, as we were saying before, but also it depends, but can be boring, more repetitive. For mm -hmm. sure, you need to follow more rules uh, because yeah. it makes sense. Also, it's big organization. They need to control everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, sometimes also if you want to make changes. This is something mm -hmm. that happened to me at Airbus. I really like my experience there. But to move forward things is pretty complicated. Uh, yeah. Even if your whole team and department wants to do something, there might be other interest in others, and this is very frustrating. Mm -hmm. uh, so Another thing is uh, that when you join a, a corporate, maybe you just have your, like, your duties, and you cannot move uh, too much mm -hmm. around uh, them. To keep right? learning. Yeah. Everything. When you just became an entrepreneur, you have to do accounting, financing, sales, um, human resources, like everything. This is a good point uh, because I think you, all of you guys, uh, are um, uh, are studying business, and I can guarantee that. I thanks God that I study my MBA because <laughs> I'm applying all the lessons learned every day or every hour. I keep telling she's, Juan, she's teaching, to me. <laughs> teaching him, well, I keep learning, I'm not teaching, but every time a lot of things that I have 
learned, I can apply directly in that moment and I have to do it by myself. And I think it's an amazing experience to start your startup after you study economics and business because you directly apply most of the things that you have learned. So you keep learning and became more expert on what you like and what you learned before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now moving to the second area that we wanted to talk about, it was about uh, this uh, topic of this meeting on whether it is the right time to be an entrepreneur or not. We thought like this big question can be split into two um, sort of uh, questions, right? With their answers. The first one is why to be an entrepreneur. I think we talked already a lot about this before. And the second is uh, how current situation, so coronavirus is impacting entrepreneurs, right? This will probably help uh, split the decision making of, of whether to do something or not. First one, uh, we talk a lot about why to be an entrepreneur, but um, the number one is that to, to, you want to solve a problem. I think the only thing that makes sense to start a business is that you find a real problem that is happening and that you identify that is happening for a lot of people, right? So it can be not solve problems or poorly solved and you find a better way to do it, but at the end of the day to solve a problem. And the good reasons on this is that yes, 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 yes. There is still a lot of problems during coronavirus and during any recession, economic recession or during any crisis, right? Uh, it's true that some problems change but there are, or, or they are not important any longer, but there are also new problems ar arising. So keep an eye on this and be motivated because there is problems all the time, even in coronavirus or crisis moments. Mm -hmm. The second part um, of the question uh, that we prepare is how coronavirus impacts entrepreneurs. The way we see it is uh, in this way, right? First thing that entrepreneurs uh, need to cope with is that there is less gas. And here we were thinking about two things. Uh, you as a founder and entrepreneur, you really have to put an eye on the cash flow of your business to make sure that you have enough liquidity for the upcoming uh, months, right? And secondly, is that uh, many customers have less purchasing power, right? They have uh, this situation, especially right now with the lockdown, they really don't, mm -hmm. cannot, even if they want to spend their money. Many of them are also, many of people are losing their jobs. There's a lot of, uh, this situation can be, but can be complex and difficult, right? Uh, so yeah, less cash is a, what we think is a, is a problem and what we have uh, faced too. The second thing that always happens is a, a strong increase of an uncertainty in the market, right? Uh, when, whether it's a pandemic like right now or it's an economic recession like last one, finance, financial crisis of 2008, there is a huge uh, pike on uncertainty and this makes things more complicated to make decisions, right? And so this is another uh, problem or impact that we have from this pandemic. And the third one is uh, fear. Uh, everybody feel more like uh, scared and they don't know what to do and uh, they don't know how to build their new life, especially with this coronavirus. You may feel even afraid to go to the supermarket and feel somebody close by mm -hmm. coughing next to you. So like you feel very like annoyed all the time and it's really like bad feeling that we all have to cope with. And we believe that all these three big pillars of circumstances at the end makes entrepreneurs to feel that everything is more difficult, right? Like, oh, this moment, I don't see that it makes any sense because it's, it's a lot of uncertainty, no gas, I'm afraid, I, I don't see, I see just like difficulties, right? So this is like the negative part that, that we have to, to cope with. Uh, but there is also a good part of the story. In every crisis situation, the human beings, we have the capacity to do two things that are pretty important to build a successful business. The first one is to innovate more, and the second is to be more efficient. And I believe that we can look into this area of the equation to feel very positive about uh, being an entrepreneur in those difficult times, because um, the situation around us will force us to think differently and to think 
deeper and to be smarter and to find better solutions. And this will save our uh, the solution we are trying to build to that problem, the reason why we decided to start our venture, right? So keep this in mind and think about uh, how good can be uh, this situation to strengthen our solutions, right? And what I wanted now to show you is a personal, no, not personal experience, sorry, an experience from somebody that I really like a lot, right? Uh, so if you don't believe it, I try to show you by this example that we really like. Um, do you know Michael Pritchard? <laughs> I hope I say it properly. Um, okay, it doesn't matter, I'll tell you his story, it's very interesting. So he uh, faced this big crisis. Okay, it was not a pandemic like what we are living today, but um, he faced this huge uh, India 2004 tsunami. This was a really big crisis, as you can see in this picture. Suddenly, many people, of course, without job, but without houses, without access to food, without access to water, so I think um, it is a very, very big crisis and it was also unexpected, like all crises, right? Uh, and I think this uh, guy was, a, a, what he did was amazing because he thought, okay, I see many people uh, dying because they don't have access to water. Um, we human beings, I think... Um, wait, 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 wait. I think okay, I yeah. the microphone. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, ah, uh, we human beings can survive without food. I think two, three weeks. I think it's around twenty days. But uh, without food, we can only survive without like water. without uh, water. Sorry, we can only survive uh, around five days, right? So many people were dying because of this circumstance and situation mm -hmm. um, that people didn't have access to clean water. Mm -hmm. So what he did is he thought about how to solve this problem in a more in innovative and efficient way. He wanted to find a solution that could be fast, uh, easy to deliver, deliver to everybody and cheap for people. So he created this, uh, he called it life-saving bottle and I think it's an amazing um, solution for a problem that was um, developed during a big crisis. And I put here a link for the whole video, but I just, uh, let's see if it works, um, prepare some minutes of his uh, presentation, which I think is interesting. Let's see if you can. Well, and the River Thames that flow through here, and this is the water. But I got to thinking, you know, if we were in the middle of a flood zone in Bangladesh, the water wouldn't look like this. So I've gone and got some stuff to add into it. And this is from my pond. <coughs> Have a smell of that, Mr. Cameraman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, we're just gonna pour that in there. <laughs> okay, we've got some uh, runoff from a sewage plant farm. So I'm just gonna put that in there. Put that in there, there we go. Some other bits and pieces, chuck that in there. And uh, I've got a little gift here from a friend of mine's rabbit. So we're just gonna put that in there as well. Okay. Now, the lifesaver bottle works really simply. You just scoop the water up. Today I'm gonna use a jug just to show you all. Let's get a bit of that poo in there. That's not dirty enough. Let's just stir that up a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna take this really filthy water and put it in here. Do you wanna drink yet? <laughs> okay, there we go. Replace the top. Give it a few pumps, okay? That's all that's necessary. As soon as I pop the teat, sterile drinking water is gonna come out. I've gotta be quick, okay, ready? There we go, mind the electrics. That is safe, sterile drinking water.
you go, Chris. What's it taste of? <laughs> okay. Let's see Chris's program throughout the rest of the show, okay? <laughs> So yeah, I I wanted we wanted to share with you this story because uh, it really motivates us uh, and inspire us to think about a way to solve a problem in an innovative and efficient way. Um, also, yeah, now that we saw we can uh, find better and stronger ways to solve problems, uh, we brought here some example of very inspirational startups that were founded in the last financial crisis 2008 and how the situation forced them to think differently and solve the problem better and more efficiently. Uber, they couldn't find, the founders couldn't find enough taxes and they knew that people had problems uh, with no money so they found a way to use the cars existing to provide this service at a better price. Airbnb allows people to travel and visit uh, places uh, sleeping for much less cost compared to hotels. WhatsApp message all your friends or people around the world, even for business for free. And Venmo is an American app. I really like it uh, because it tried to help the problem that we were facing. We lost, um, re uh, we lost um, credibility for banks in the financial crisis. So they developed this app to transfer money with a mobile phone without any banks. So only the crisis make them think farther and find better solution, cheaper for the customers and more uh, efficient uh, thanks to the crisis. So yeah, and we wanted to give a lot, a lot of uh, another three points that we think are important to consider uh, when you think about being an entrepreneur in crisis. Uh, there is less competitors because uh, unfortunately many people see this situation is very complicated and this can be an added value for entrepreneurs. Second, it's easier to find talent in the market because even though unfortunately many people lose their jobs because of the situation, then there is more unemployment people with a lot of high skills that are willingness to work for lower salaries. And this is an added value for a startup, especially at the beginning. And the last point to keep in mind and feel motivated is that all recessions end. After this, um, I think we have only about 45, 50 minutes. So I'll try to go a little bit faster for the following slides. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or if I have to finish, uh, Christine. You know, you feel free. We can make like a like now short uh, possibility for uh, listeners to ask the questions and then we can continue. Okay, so, thank you, Christine. Yeah, so are there some questions from those uh, who are listening right now? Ah, As we, okay. are, we have the audience here from Latvia, from Greece, Hmm. from Finland, from Spain, of course. <laughs> uh, let's, let's check it because uh, I'm sorry, it didn't pump, pop up the, the questions. Let us find it. Yeah, but uh, I don't see yet the questions. I'm, I'm letting them ask either by chat or aloud, but let's, let's wait. We don't have yet. Ah, okay. okay. So okay. I, I can keep, we can keep going and okay. If we see any questions, then yeah. we... Okay, let's do it like that. So okay. so uh, so for listeners, free free, feel free to uh, to write them in a chat. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Um, do you keep seeing our screen? Yes. Just uh, just make the full screen. Uh, make full screen. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Like this? Perfect, thank you. Um, we wanted to bring this positiveness idea about uh, becoming an entrepreneur and being uh, now the right time to, to build your startup uh, a little bit into the European context uh, since you uh, uh, are from all countries around Europe and there are some good news. Um, so what happened in the last years is that uh, the, the um, the, the startups are the biggest growing uh, creator of jobs in the market. 
right? And they also create every year a big amount of jobs. So this is something uh, very important and interesting to consider. That is that uh, startups have a strong macroeconomic power to generate employment. So please uh, think about this because you are not alone and these uh, startups like us, we keep growing and fighting. So stay positive and join the community. <laughs> Uh, second point that we wanted to highlight, uh, those numbers are for Europe. Um, it is very good to see, uh, I see, I, ah, okay. Uh, it's important to see uh, that there are more and more um, venture capitals being found um, in Europe, right? The, the green bars see a little uh, a growing tendency. And also what is probably even more important is the gray bars that let us know that uh, the money invested in startups by venture capitals is growing pretty rapidly in Europe. So this indicates that right now is the best moment in the whole history to find opportunities to get funded in your startup. So another uh, reason to, to keep in mind. And um, another thing that uh, we were thinking about also that we wanted to share with you from our point of view on whether it's a good moment to build a startup is that uh, right now there is, uh, because of the pandemic and the coronavirus, there is a more um, need or request for digitalization in the companies. Uh, many more conservative uh, companies had to be online or be online in a better and more efficient way uh, all of a sudden. Uh, it was unexpected, so now there is this need from all of the companies to really adapt and be online and offer better digital services to the customers. So this is accelerating and has had been strongly accelerated by this uh, coronavirus. So keep it in mind and look uh, an eye on look on this. And uh, second thing, um, as we were saying, there is enough capital uh, liquidity in the market to fund the startup. So it has never been better. So this is a great opportunity. And finally, the government institutions are supporting more and more startups. In some countries better, in some others worse. We can say that in Spain it's not as good as we would like to, but I believe uh, from my friends that in other countries, uh, really the government support the startups. So think about uh, this additional support that some of you guys have and just use it because it's, it's great. It's great yes. support to, to, to do it. And the, the last point we, we gathered for this talk uh, that we thought it was interesting to bring to all of you is um, this reality that we cannot ignore. Um, it's true that we believe right now is also a good moment to build your startup for everything we have said so far, but also there are some section, sectors of the industry or some areas that are on a better um, shape uh, yeah. to, to build something in the close future and some others that might have more difficulties, right? To keep going. So I think this is something for you, all of you uh, thinking about building your startup to think about um, where you are and whether it's e even better um, according to what the market indicates. Uh, it is better moment right now to, to build your startup. Some of the really positive areas, as you probably have noticed in the last weeks, is the growing on groceries, streaming services, uh, medicine online, digital medicine services, and collaboration tools. Um, this is very, very, very interesting. Also report all these last slides, I can send it to you if you want to look into more detail. But yeah, think about which area and try to be in the nice spot for the next years to increase your uh, probabilities to succeed. succeed sorry. And finally, we wanted to end this talk by sharing with you the lessons we learned so far. And we hope it can be useful for all of you. Uh, first um, lesson. Yeah, it's talk, uh, <laughs> talk to your customers. This is the main and most important uh, thing that you have to do because um, they are the ones that they are going to give you their money to you. So it's very important that you fulfill their requirements uh, and also not only to the customers. We first thing that we uh, did when uh, once we decide to 
move forward and to do this idea of uh, move, move eco uh, a real idea and a real uh, startup is to start to test with the car dealers if uh, our idea had sense or not. Uh, afterwards, uh, we did uh, like uh, 200, I mean, uh, an interview with 200 people. Um, so we mm -hmm. wanted to know if our fears and... Um, our yeah, the problem we saw. Yeah, the problem we, we saw and, and we felt it was also the problem of uh, others. others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. this is the, the very most important because otherwise you are just uh, solving the problem for you, not for the customers. And, uh, and then it will be difficult to sell to, to others. Right. So, yeah, um, yeah, talk to your customers as much as possible. And this one um, is a lesson we have learned that is very important for us. And what happened uh, in our case is that um, when we were pitching our uh, our solution to a lot of people, as we said, you try to get into ecosystems and try to find people who know your industry or did it before and you talk and talk and tell him your story to get their feedback, then uh, there is an amazing opportunity. And what happened, the dynamics that we found is that many people um, find a passion on what you do. And these people who have a passion and really suddenly share your passion, you're able to transmit that what we are making is important. Then what happens is that these people start contacting you with their ideas. And this I think is a really powerful dynamic that if you are able to put in place, it will support a lot uh, the growth of your business and to shape it stronger. Because at the end of the day, what we have seen is that we have a few people uh, who knows a lot more than what we know about electric mobility, about car dealers, about digital marketplaces, and all of those people, amazingly, they talk to us, they call us, and they come with uh, new ideas, better ways to do it, they ask us uh, questions to, to yeah, challenge our solutions, and this is something very important, I think, gather information on the right people and have them engage to support and be thinking about how to make your startup better. Uh, next one, I think uh, we already said, and you probably agree, it's important to, great for, to look for great mentors to support you. And we want to give you here an example of a, a failure that we had and why we really encourage you to find those experts as soon as possible in your process. Uh, because Juan and I, we never uh, build up any marketplace or yeah. any digital product. Uh, in order to create the first version of our MVP, we uh, hired a company, a company expert in developing uh, MVP, first version of products to startups, yeah, the right? Technology. The technology, yeah. So we talked to them and uh, basically we paid uh, for a service that in our mind was going to be something like this. We were going to receive a completely functional website that works perfectly in the mobile phone, <laughs> that looks very nice, that has uh, a perfect catalog to filter out your cars and so on. So this is what we ordered. But uh, Juan and I, we did our best trying to monitor what they were doing. But since we didn't do it before and we didn't have a mentor, what happened is that what we received was this. <laughs> 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 they gave us a product that we learned later that it was not well done. Um, it was not working well. It was, of course, not working on mobile phone. So it was a big problem and we were suffering a lot because we put our time and our money and we felt super frustrated. Uh, so please, 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 if you guys are like us coming from business, you've never done any digital product, find a mentor who is able to help you yeah. assess uh, how are you doing or who can support you better or if you subcontract the first services and you don't have in-house uh, developer, please find for somebody who can help you and avoid this pain that we have. <laughs> <laughs> but you can survive also. We so far yeah, survived. Right. La, eh, almost last uh, tip, eh, stay focused. Eh, as an entrepreneur, you keep thinking about new ideas, you keep learning on your journey about how to do things differently. But at the end, uh, it's difficult, but you need to make a choice the best you can, where you think is the best solution to start with. 
and try just to focus on that. Uh, this is very, very important too. Another thing related to talk to your customers, also treat your employees like customers and customers like kings. Uh, we would love to invite for beers to all of our customers. <laughs> this is our mindset. So we try to develop a service and a conversation with them that is pretty close. And yeah, I think keep in mind that customers is like the king to make your startup be able to survive because we need their, their money to sustain our revenues also and our their, financials. Their information, they are giving you a lot of information and then they will let you know how you should move to find a more... Better mm, fit, no? Yeah, and more customers like uh, the one that mm, you are talking to. That's true, that's true. Juan takes care of sales and he's convincing <laughs> customers to bring more customers. You mean that, <laughs> that's right? right that's, yeah. that's, that's very important. Yeah, um, I can, we cannot leave this conversation without uh, telling you keep an eye on cash. Uh, with the daily things ongoing, I had this problem, you put the projections on the cash and counting to the end of the month and suddenly you suffer because the numbers are not working as you wanted. So try to keep this very simple and very clear and, and have a look very in a regular basis. Never give up. Uh, unless it's time to do so. So keep trying, but also listen to people who might recommend you, hey, right now at this point, there are evidences that this is not the right path to follow. So keep working hard, but keep your eyes and ears open to listen and to, and to sometimes step back and think, okay, so far what we have done, what we have learned on the journey, are we going in a good direction? Should I move a little bit, try something different? All of this, right? Uh, but keep fighting, keep fighting, it's fine. <laughs> and yeah, this is our talk. Uh, we want to thank you very much. Um, this was our first experience doing a Zoom uh, presentation. Uh, <laughs> if you, you have much. any questions. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, we do have a question. So Olga is asking, did COVID-19 affect your business in some way? Yeah. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, it really affected. Uh, first of all, all car dealers were closed. And when people are buying cars, especially used cars that we are selling, people want to go and see the cars and, and, and do a, yeah, a, test a, test, uh, a driving test. Yeah, and, and this, uh, this really impacted us. In Spain, the sales have been reduced uh, by 90% in, in April. And so what we did uh, was to, to stop all the actions uh, in terms of sales. Uh, so all the uh, digital advertisement, we stopped stop it completely. Mm. Uh, we didn't... We, 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 were, we were looking forward to contracting more uh, salespeople. Mm. So we also stopped the, the hiring, the hiring process. process. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we stopped the hiring process and what we did is we tried uh, to think uh, uh, positively. Uh, we were also lucky because we are small enough and the full-time employers is Juan, I and the developer. And then we have some part-time uh, freelancers supporting us so we didn't have to fire anybody. So what we decided is let's take this time to keep developing the platform, make improvements, make it work better, let's gonna test with some customers we had, the new changes, so we try to uh, use this time to make our product better and also uh, Juan and I we work in, in creating a strategy for sales to make sales more scalable because in the first month we had a lot of phone calls and we were dealing with them the best we could and uh, mm -hmm. now we thought okay let's gonna think about let's gonna group the the customer um, uh, segment target mm -hmm. segment let's gonna try to prepare a pitch that is more efficient and the steps so we try to optimize the customer journey with them and also we created a big database for electric and hybrid cars to be able to give more information, more accurate in our, in website. our website. So basically we use this, we stop commercial actions and we work on improving the product and improving the sales process. Thank you. Thank you. And Maris <laughs> is asking, uh, Maris is asking, isn't it harder to make business with your family rather than making <laughs> business with your friends? Probably it's a typical question to you, yeah? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but very logical. Very yeah. logical. 
I think it depends on relationship that you have with your family. Before, not, before <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I once I started, or oh, I tried to start a, a business with uh, one friend of mine and I couldn't. So for myself, it's easier to work with my sister than with a friend. Uh, that with a friend. But, uh, what are the differences? Maybe like some I don't know. Maybe I think that uh, you are clever than my <laughs> uh, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, Oof, I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, we have a really really good relationship. Uh, of course, we have our fights and so on. But um, as um, I think as, as every founder, as every founder uh, have uh, discussions and uh, fights with uh, the other founders. And uh, this is good because you are building um, yeah, uh, um, a product and you have to think a lot of things. So you have to put everything on the table and always be respectful, like uh, mm -hmm. be open mind, don't say anything to you, share everything and just have a, an, an open mindset and, 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 yeah, and sometimes also have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> so not, not, not only working because as we are family, we are like living every uh, that's why we are together in the lockdown yeah we live in the same house <laughs> we live in the same house so you have uh, something also to stop yeah to disconnect and just have a beer and not only just uh, no, no not together also sometimes what i want to say also maybe uh, i think there is good and bad things the good things maybe is that you have a um, such a good relationship that you sometimes say the things pretty openly and you don't think in advance how to do not offend the other person or to shape your your yeah. communication yeah. right uh, and because you know each other for a long time and when you are with friends uh, you try maybe to to be more careful with your inner deeper thoughts right <laughs> But also the other way, uh, the other the other side that is positive is that we have trained to discuss the whole life. So we have been discussing <laughs> <laughs> so many times that uh, you don't take it so hard or so difficult or so like the end of the of the tunnel, and you face a lot of stress during this situation. So uh, feeling comfortable in discussions and just make them even fun is also an added value to yeah. start a business with your family. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to add to this question of Maris is that did you sign some agreement uh, either written or just some other way so regarding the uh, work input working load input sharing the profits uh, so just in order to be clear and not to have misunderstandings yeah, of course. and this is a very very good question mm -hmm. uh, uh, to be honest uh, we are uh, on, this document is ongoing in, in our side. Um, I must say, honestly, with our experience, when I came from the MBA, I really fight to have this in the table. But I had difficulties because my family felt a little bit offended, like to really organize this pretty like in a corporate uh, way. No, like, uh, like in an official way. Yeah, like in an official way, right? Uh, but I thought, uh, like you are asking, and it's my recommendation, that it is important to take some time and discuss openly what I think is fair, what do you think is fair, how should this balance with this, what is your expect the expectations of each member, and how, like this as clear as this is, the better for the future. Mm -hmm. We are working on this. Uh, we are like 80% finalized this. We are a little bit late in the process. Um, mm -hmm. Not so late, we believe, because we have been working on this like eight months, nine months mm -hmm. in this company. But totally agree, Christine. Yeah. Uh, we recommend everybody to put it ahead on the table and fight to to make it uh, because it's better it's yeah. not against the family it's in favor for the family relationships right even you are working for the family this doesn't mean that they hasn't be hasn't got to be like official yeah you know yeah so uh, mm -hmm. and, and should be like serious mm. and also i think uh by the effort to create this document uh all people can openly say what are their expectations. Otherwise, you work on assumptions that your family think or will be by your side all the time and so on. But no, you need to have a clear conversation on how do you see it, how do you see it now in the future, and don't have uh, 
this company broken because of uh, not so aligned well. expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are there some other questions from the listeners? Let's let's give a chance to ask either in the chat or just aloud. Maybe we can also ask. Uh, I also like asking a lot. <laughs> we would like to ask you for feedback. How did you like the presentation or whether it was on topic or not? How to make it better? Maybe if you don't want to say it now, feel free to write us later, but uh, yeah. it's also good for us to, to learn. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, so uh, those who are listening right now, you can write in the chat or say it aloud uh, for sure. Uh, but otherwise, at least from for the participants of Latvia who are the students, the, the, I created survey uh, with open questions so that they can share the feedback. So as soon as we will get that, we will send you. But, but for the rest of the listeners, feel free to, to write in the chat or say it. Of course. Yes, please. <laughs> Okay, uh, probably not uh, no questions yet, but uh, as you uh, gave the context, I think that uh, will be very good so that um, they could ask because uh, yeah. uh, we can see that you love what you do <laughs> <laughs> and really with, with the best meaning of this word and not the formal thing, but really deep in your heart that's yours. And I think with such a huge passion that you have, the, the, that will give you many benefits for sure, financial okay. and and uh, for like um, for self development and everything that will be important for your life. So thank okay. you very much that you are sharing that with others. And you know the good good karma, it will come back yeah. to yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. So, so it will be. It, it it's it's very good that you are doing this. So. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to ask um, Professor Baeba Shavrin, you wanted to say some words um, uh, now. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah From good. University of Latvia. Yeah. Yes, okay. so because oh. I started and I should finalize, you see. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and uh, I would like to say that um, we are really thankful, first of all, for a power project for this opportunity to see uh, all of you uh, in small screens, but you see it was like in life. And, uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And uh, many, many, many thanks to all of speakers because uh, during uh, those both days, we had excellent lectures, really excellent, with so enthusiastic expression of opinions <laughs> and uh, sharing experience and so on. And uh, I would like to say that this was even complementary information if we started with skills and uh, uh, the things we which are like um, um, something like fundamental for, for entrepreneurship and uh, this challenging time. And uh, today we had those um, cases and um, this was uh, always the view from inside. That means business view, uh, different uh, countries view, different experience. No, they are living now in very, very challenging uh, time period. And uh, of course, this is the first approach, the first tries to analyze the situation and its impact. And uh, of course, those are the tries because we are trying to understand each of us from our uh, own angle. But um, in general, I would like to say that uh, we can summarize that we became uh, richer in our knowledge, in our understanding, and if we are coming back to skills which were touched uh, yesterday, that means we for sure improved our skills, all of us. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you very much, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Juan. And then uh, we will send you the feedback for sure. Uh, uh, and. Um, and uh, thank you very much once more. Thanks to you. So thank you. Nice. And if you have any question about buying an electric car, do not hesitate. Yes, to I'm your target <laughs> audience, actually. <laughs> For sure. Any doubt, we will uh, add word. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.
Mais c'est nice, ouais. 